Hey guys, it's Bang for About PC Gaming here. AMD have finally released RX Vegas 64 and 56 available for purchase, and also reviewers have finally released all their performance figures, so you can quite give yourself a better opinion on the card. And I'm certainly going to do that today as well. So I did promise I would give you my thoughts on the card once all the information was available. Unfortunately, I don't own um, an RX Vega 56 or 64 card. But if I was to buy a card, I'll definitely let you know my choice at the end of this video. Now, um, I've chosen Anantec just to quickly back up some of um, my my opinion. And I'll go through a few benchmarks that they've gone ahead and done. So this review was done by Ryan Smith and NATO. Um, so the games I've chosen is Battlefield 1, Doom, Dawn of War 3, F1 2016, Grand Theft Auto 5 and Ghost Recon Wildlands. Doom favouring AMD more than Nvidia and uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands would probably favour Nvidia a bit more than AMD. So but I've tried to keep it as neutral as possible. So starting off with Battlefield 1, at 4K you can see the RX Vega beating out the GTX 1080 Founders Edition with 58.1 frames per second while the GTX 1080 getting 53.5 RX Vega 56 getting um, 51.5 frames per second that's only 2 frames per second off the GTX 1080 beating out the GTX 1070 by over um, just about 10 frames per second which is very very impressive um, RX Vega beating out the GTX 1070 here um, by about 6 frames per second so doing pretty well at 4K now dropping down to 1440p, you can see the RX Vega getting 101, uh, 101 frames per second, that's the 64, while the GTX 1080 only getting 98 frames per second. So around a 3 frames per second lead here in Battlefield 1, which is very impressive, um, as this is quite a neutral game, and um, it's a great engine from the Frostbite. So this will probably be the same with games like Mass Effect and other Frostbite engine titles like... Um, need for speed as well so looking at the Vega 56 you're getting 92 frames per second which is um, around 12 frames per second higher than the GTX 1070 so G um, the RX Vega 56 definitely running away with it in terms of performance compared to the GTX 1070 and RX Vega 64 so dropping down to 1080p you can see the GTX 1080 is somehow taking the lead now with 134 frames per second compared to the 130 with the RX Vega 64 while the Vega 56 still maintains its 11 frames per second lead over the GTX 1070 so you can see that's just probably due to um, HBM scaling does a lot better at higher resolutions while GDDR5X being a bit faster dealing with lower resolutions a bit more um, effectively so moving on to Doom this is the game where I expected the best from um, AMD RX Vega and it's certainly showing here at 4k getting 69 frames per second that's 8 frames per second over the GTX 1080 which was only able to get 61.6 frames per second while well, RX Vega 60, um, 56 sorry, was getting pretty much exactly the same performance as the GTX 1080 here which is extremely impressive this is at 4k with a $400 card that has to be um, commended that is amazing performance now looking at the GTX 1070 lagging behind by 11 frames per second so seeing a little bit of a trend here between the GTX 1070 and RX Vega 56 um, so around about 11% faster in terms of performance um, over a whole which I've been seeing over the reviews dropping down to uh, 1440p more of the same here 133 frames per second to the GTX 1070 is 120 so 13 frames per second gap here while the Vega 56 is 115 to uh, 95 so even the 20 frames per second gap here which is impressive and considering these cards are roughly the same price um, at 1080p now Vega still um, 64 sorry still maintaining the lead of 183 to 170 so 13 frames per second lead here while Vega 67, um, 56 has increased its lead by over 25 frames per second so awesome stuff in Doom moving on to Dawn of War 3 now at 4k here we can see um, the RX Vega 64 getting 48 frames per second that's 4 frames per second higher than the GTX 1080 Founders Edition while the 1070 is trailing behind the RX Vega 56 by 7 frames per second only getting 35 to 42 but this is at 4k dropping down to 1440p we can see the GTX 1080 um, grabbing the lead again at 82.8 frames per second here 
and uh, the RX Vega 56 scaling almost the same performance as the 64 so it all shows you how well um, HBM does at the higher resolutions but not so much at the lower resolutions here GTX 1070 getting left behind though by 10 frames per second here so again trend is continuing at 1080p you can see the GTX 1080 pulling away at 98 frames per second as well as the GTX 1070 with 94 frames while the Vega 64 and 56 drop down by about 10 to 12 frames per second behind both cards so um, it all depends on what resolution you're playing what um, card is going to be the best for you it, seem, it seems at the moment moving on to F1 2016 you can see that RX Vega is um, taking a 1 frames per second lead at uh, 4K with 63 frames per second always nice to see over 60 frames at 4K in a single card while Vegas 56 is getting 56 frames per second at about 6 frames per second over the GTX 1070 so not bad 4K performance from the Vega 56 and uh, these two cards are very very neck and neck it has to be said now dropping down resolution you can see the 1080 again I'm grabbing back the lead with a lower resolution at 97 frames a second compared to the Vega 64's 95 while the Vega 56 at 87.9 frames a second still ahead of the GTX 1070 by um, around about um, 6 frames a second almost 7 so good stuff here dropping down to 1080p GTX 1080 opening up a 13 frames a second gap over the Vega 64 while our Vega 56 still maintains its lead by 3 frames per second but you can see that the HBM scaling becomes starts giving you dimin diminishing returns the lower the resolution you go um, GTA 5 now this game gives the GTX 1080 its first win at 4K at 38.3 frames per second while the Vega 64 only gets 28.8 never good to see um, a single card at 4K drop below 30 frames per second but um, I would imagine this is more of a driver optimization or game optimization issue here um, because even the 1070 is beating out the RX Vega 64 the Vega 56 dropping down to 25 frames per second here as well 5 frames per second behind the GTX 1070 its first loss to the card with the games I've used now 2560 by 1440 you can see a bigger lead pulling out from the GTX 1080 at 79 frames per second here compared to the RX Vega 64's 54 frames so over 20 frames per second gap here um, the GTX 1070 here has got a 13 frames per second gap over the GTX uh, sorry over the RX Vega 56 so um, this game is definitely not great with um, Vega's architecture at this time but things may change we never know and the same continues at 1080p 110 frames per second to 79 so that pretty much kind of tells you everything that's going on here that's a 30 frames per second gap here so um, you know we can see that um, HBM doesn't do too great at the lower resolutions here um, Ghost Recon Wildlands this is a game that slightly favors Nvidia depending on what settings you're using I would imagine no GameWorks title um, effects were used in this comparison now you can see here um, Vega is trading blows with the GTX 1080 38 frames to 39 so neck and neck while the Vega 56 is still beating at the GTX 1070 at 4k both cards are achieving over 30 FPS which is nice to see at um, 1440p the GTX 1080 is starting to open up a bigger lead with 67 frames a second to 59 so around about 8 frames a second gap here while the Vega 56 is pretty much almost tied with the Vega 64 so great value with the Vega 56 when it comes to both cards um, 1070 still behind Vega 56 so it's basically showing its dominance even though it's not much of a gap it's just still being ahead of the GTX 1070 is just impressive and um, at 1080p the trend continues 90 frames per second for the GTX 1080 over um, the Vega 64 65 so um, doesn't do too great at um, 1080p that's something we saw with the Fury X as well so this is nothing new when it comes to HBM which kind of you know makes you wonder is HBM really really required at this time for consumer cards um, I, I have my doubts about that I think uh, GDDR5X or GDDR5, GDDR6 in the future are better options for consumer gaming cards to finalize um, power consumption idle figures are great for both cards 79 and 80 watts for GTX 1070 and 1080 this is full system power consumption 
50, 86 and 86 for 50, the Vega 56 and 64. But when it comes to gaming, say a game like Battlefield 1 on the load, you're looking at 459 watts for the Vega 64, while the Vega 56 gets 368. Now, if you look at the GTX 1070, that's 290 watts for complete system power draw, while the GTX 1080 does 310. That's about 110 to 150 watts, depending on the game. So that's that's quite a lot um, of power difference between um, both cars. So that's something to bear in, in mind when considering um, buying this card if you're interested in power consumption figures. GPU temperatures and noise now. Temperatures are okay at idle 33 for both cards and 31 for both cards when it comes to Founders Edition and RX Vega cards. But when it comes to load, you're looking at 83 degrees for the reference design for the Vega 64, but 73 degrees for the 56, which is good for a reference design card. Um, moving on to um, acoustics. You're looking at 41.7 decibels at idle. Um, GTX 1080 and 1070 doing roughly the same. While as gaming, you're looking at 55.4 um, for um, gaming, which is quite loud compared to the GTX 1080's 49.4 and the GTX 1070's 48.2. So definitely the noisier card is the RX Vega 64 and slightly warmer than the Founders Edition as well. So. I'm going to sum this up by saying if you're playing at 1080p, the GTX 1080 is a better card for you. Um, if you're playing at uh, 1440p to 4K and own a FreeSync, already own a FreeSync monitor, it's still a good good deal to go with the RX Vega 64. But um, overclocking, if you're an overclocker, I'd probably say go with the GTX 1080 as a whole because you'll get better performance. But um, it's not a bad card um, for the final result. It's definitely a better, looking better than it was when you were comparing the Frontier Edition figures that we were seeing. But it does seem that um, Vega's architecture is a bit choosy about the games. Some games perform terrible, some games perform um, pretty good. So there's a bit of inconsistency there. But generally, um, the RX Vega 56 is the, the MVP for me. I performs the GTX 1070 performs close to the GTX 1080 in some games and very very close to the RX Vega 64 at lower resolutions as well so um, there you go guys that's my opinion on RX Vega sorry this has taken so long but there was no way to really sum this up without really going into it so hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching